Could you tell me your name, please? My name is uh, Dr. Claude Villiers. I'm an associate professor at Florida Gulf Coast University in the Civil Engineering Department. So what are we doing is, uh, we're doing a concrete mix design and preparation for our lab. That would be coming on October 13. So then therefore the students need to be prepared and understand what it takes for, to design a concrete mix. So I just went to an exercise where they actually went to the full process of it. So now on, the, on this time, I'm going to make them go on the board and test it themselves where they're going to do the calculation themselves. And I'm going to, uh, to walk along with them from group per group to see if they capture all the information that I express, ex explain to them uh, during the lecture. So that particular aspect of the lecture, it's called Integrated Lecture Lab. In the sense that we integrated our lecture so that we enhance it by giving them the students a chance to practice before they left the class. So it's not, only, it's not only a matter of just listen to me and then they get it, but also they get a chance to practice. Yeah, uh, what you see here, this is in preparation for a lab that I'm going to have for my class. The class itself is called Civil Engineering Material. My name is Dr. Claude Villiers. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Civil Engineering in the College of Engineering. So I'm actually one of the uh, faculty that came in to start the program in 2006. So we're going to have a very interesting lab coming up on the 13th, where we're going to actually mix concrete. And so you could see in the, in the daily basis, you see this truck that drive by with the drum, that wall. So they carry concrete on them. So the, the engineering students that go to the pro pro program, they have to be the one design this mix. So if anything's technically that go on, they're responsible for it. So for them to really fully understand what's happened, they go to a full understanding of the calculation that it takes to do the concrete mix, as well as mix it themselves. Because how good does it, it, it is if you're going to tell people how to do it and you yourself never tested one time. So what I've actually did in my class, I had the privilege to use real life example Instead of, for example, myself when I went to school, they just used some things just to really just make, make me happy. But instead, I try to make it as well as possible so that my students can connect what they learn in the classroom to their real life. These days, they try to use recycle crush concrete more and more because we want to protect the environment. So in this laboratory experiment, I use recycle crush concrete, which are abbreviated by RCA. One test and hypothesis that I tested is, can the recycled crushed concrete be used to really produce concrete mix? And the way that I use that, I actually started this thing since 2009 in, in this class. Uh, so I uh, use uh, the, uh, the virgin rack, which we call it S1A or number 57. If you go to Alico Road, you see query that produce this rack all the time. They mine it in the ground. They dig it and do a lot of process, and it's a lot of energy that we use for that. Well, what happened with the recycled crush concrete, there's a lot of uh, construction, like bridges and all this, and sometimes in Florida we have a lot of hurricane. When the hurricane comes and hit the bridge, it's destroyed, we have to break it. What do you really do with all this uh, concrete that you have left? So in the civil engineering, we try to utilize that concrete instead of put it in the ground, and if we can reuse it again, then we will make it better, not only save money, but we also protect the environment. But you cannot do it just by doing it. You have to understand what you're doing. So that's why I implemented in my course where I had the students design a mix that is just a mix with no recycled crushed concrete, and we test it. F prime C is the, is the quality of the mix that we see at 28 days. And what we have seen in the past the mix with no recycle crush concrete is give you better strength than the one with recycle crush concrete. Now that sounds bad, but remember my target was to be 2,500 psi. The recycle crush concrete meet the target and are both. So 2,500 psi concrete. What what do we use that for generally? Is that for just standard uh, cement? Usually this one will be used for sidewalk. 
Okay, and, and 3,000 PSI, what do they use that for? 3,000 PSI you'd be like using for any things that does not carry major woods. For example, that, well, not any things in this building, I will use some things, but like at least four to 5,000 right. PSI, because we're talking about four-story building. Uh, if I have a two-story house on the coast, or a three-story house on the coast, what PSI do you recommend I use? If it is in the coast, and if it's three-story, and depending on the amount of load you're going to put, if it's a big building where you have a lot of heavy uh, equipment on it, uh, with your air conditioning and all this thing, I would say 5,000 PSI. Now, um, for example, let's say I build a precast wall, and I'm going to stack these walls, and I'm going to go 10 stories, or 20 stories for that matter. Let's say I'm going to go 20 stories. What PSI am I going to need? This one, it's st tend to be like you get 5,000 can do it. I could tell you 5,000 could do it. And the reason that I say this is because I don't know how much more load that it will carry, okay? Now, assuming that will go really an excess of amount of load, I will say sometime by 8,000. But 8,000 PSI, 5,000 PSI is a really good mix. How high can you go up with 8,000 It's not PSI. the height. No? You remember, it's about the load. Okay. So 5,000 can be used any of the even skyscraper and for example, New York. So what we have over here, so we also determine another characteristic where we look at what about in the field if they cannot maintain the uh, recycle caution quick where it's got to change over time. Well, what I did is I reduced the amount of recycle caution concrete. I keep it like, like it was. I add 10% more recycle caution concrete and I add 25% recycle caution concrete. What we've seen in the past, we expected this strength will decrease, but by how much? Well, it's de decreased significantly to a level when you add too much recycle cost concrete, it does not produce something to the level to give you the target that you need. Then we play again, we really add some admixture on, on it. The admixture that we use is water reducing agent, and we also use super plasticizer. These are typical uh, admixture we use in Florida. So, what I've seen. Uh, I've seen that the, when we use water reducing agent, we get a very good mix to a level is even better than the original because that mix you're supposed to increase your strength. However, when we use super plasticizer, what we get, as we're supposed to get better strength, we don't really get that much better strength. So that's some things that we need to investigate more. So in 2015 for this year class, I'm going to really learn from what I have from the past where the students are going to see if we can produce a high quality concrete. Because we're going to try to produce something with 2,500 PSI for sidewalk and something for 4,000 PSI that can use in any major building. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to produce this mix so that we could see if we can design it with recycle cost concrete to give us 2,500 and 4,000 PSI. Anytime we break a cylinder, we're going to really break it where we get two samples per mix. And we're going to test them at three days, seven days, 14 days, 28 days, and 56 days. So this is the whole scenario of the experiment that the students will be using on that September, to, uh, October 13 for us to complete that. I hope that gives you a picture of what we're going to do uh, for, the, uh, for the class uh, doing the uh, lab experiment. And all of this is students driven, and I put them uh, with the problem statement, and then I um, uh, let them use their intelligence so that they can give me of the essence of what they learned from this experiment. Thank you. Uh, you, have, you are working on a concrete mix that required uh, uh, each cubic yard for concrete that you're going to have. You have the one of cement ratio that is equal to 0 0.47. Now remember with the 11th step that we have, that's step two, that is already given to you. If it's given to you, you don't need to go back and use any of the table to really calculate what the cement ratio. So you cannot do these things blindly. Are you all with me? So step two is already given to you. Uh, at the same time, they're always only telling you the amount of cost aggregate. Dry gravel, gravel means like the cost aggregate. That is 1963 pound per cubic yard. So you do not need to go to that table, get the factor and all these things to do that because that is already given. So you also given 4% of air. So again, all of these things, you don't need to go back to really calculate these things. What is given, use it. 
All right, so now uh, they give you the specific gravity for the cost aggregate. They give you the moisture content and the absorption. So you've got a lot of property that is given to you. So what you need to do now, just like we were doing in this problem, remember when I erased uh, the weight that you had, I did actually erase that. So you're going to, going to use all the weight that is given to you, be able to calculate what is not. All right? And then find the weight of the fine aggregate. And you know how to do that. Yes. By getting your volume. And then from your volume, you get the weight of fine aggregate. And then once you finish that, you go on to do the correction. Okay? You go on to get the correction to really get your final weight. So step one, let's go calculate the weight that is given to you. Convert all this weight to volume so that you could get the weight of fine aggregate. And then we're going to start, start at this point, and then I'll give you a hint and all these things, check your work, and then after that we'll do the final Now, taking this problem, so I went through some calculation with them for them to really understand the concept. However, we don't believe that just enough going to really improve their students' learning, the students' learning. So not only they see me doing it, they listen to me doing that. Now you could see all of the students in group and small group, they actually try it for themselves before they leave the class. So we believe that this technique will help them retain the material better. They have a better confidence that they can do it themselves because I will help them. So therefore, they they be en enthusiastic when they go home. They can actually practice more to a level that will help them. This is completely different, and this is a little bit unique than to a few universities that does that in the nation, including Florida Golf Course. So when we start our engineering program, we started that way, where we make our students to, to do some in-class activity, you know, for a better retention of the material. That way, they really like, you know, they can spend the weekend doing something like that. Because if you lost, you were like, gee, I don't want to do anything like that. And there's a lot of this kind of thing that happened to a level that we could have a lot more engineering, better engineering, because of the because of the lack of interest. So we use this technique to really, you know, enhance their knowledge. Water cement ratio is provided. You take the weight of the cement that is given to you that's going to give you your weight of your water. Every one of you I see I has calculated that. So uh, the weight of uh, cost aggregate was uh, provided to you because it was 1963. All right. So now what we need to do, we need to convert all this weight into volume. Now the way the book does it, instead of using 63.4, they convert the unit weight of water to pound per cubic yard. So that's when all your volume going to be cubic yard for that cubic yard of mix. So if you didn't do it this way, that's no problem. Don't, don't, come, don't, you did it right. Because I can tell you, those of you in this group that did that, if you divide all these numbers by 27, you're going to get the exact same number. So it's no big deal, no big deal. So when you do that for the cement, this is the volume for cement. When you do that for the water, this is the volume for water. When you do that for the gravel, this is the volume for your gravel. Don't forget, you get 4% air. Very typical mistake students make. You don't want to make that mistake unless you want me to use my red mark. So it's the same concept. So you end up with um, the width of the, the volume for the cement that, that is 0.271 cubic yard. So you convert that cubic yard into width and you get the width of the cement. Uh, I want you to, to just calculate what is the uh, final width for the water, for your, for your gravel, for your cement, and for, for everything. Okay. So if you didn't calculate all this, use this weight. Okay, use this weight, and then weight, use the given. First calculate your weight of your cost aggregate final. Calculate the weight of your cost, uh, of, your, of your fine aggregate. Calculate your weight of your water. Let's do that real quick. Take three minutes to do this, and then we're going to, I'm going to give you the answer, okay? Let's do that. Point nine. Are so you get your weight for your cost aggregate. Why do you subtract? Because that's absorption. You're calculating 
calculate for the weight of water or for the weight of cost aggregate? We're calculating for the weight of water. For the weight of water? Yeah. Because the absorption has nothing to do with the weight of the cost aggregate. Yeah, you know that. What, where's your final weight of your cost aggregate then? Right here. Cost aggregate final weight's right there. For it's right there because you add yeah. Yeah. You add that much to it due to the water yeah. that it has on it. But one thing if you do, if you get that number, you, know just use it you could use it oh, when you yeah. get your weight of water, yeah, you yeah, subtract 31. that from it. Okay? Right. So so and it. the same thing for this, and all you have to do is add for the absorption. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? Okay, so then we don't need to do all this. Then. We just need yeah. this because, part. Yeah. And then we just need to do it for the, the sand also, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... I recommend when you do this, don't do the mixing water first, okay? Just do it last. So what you have here for the cost of cost aggregate, so it's 1963, but uh, it's, I believe, 16% uh, due to moisture content. Uh, so I usually don't like to put it that way, okay? It's 1963 plus... Whatever the percentage of the moisture content time next 1963. It gives you the same calculation. So that's supposed to be 1,994 pounds. So far, so good. You do the same thing for the final aggregate. It's the same calculation, okay? If you do, it's, it's, the, same, it's the same thing that just the book sometimes they put a different return. Right. Let me quickly do it for you. So you have 19. 63 plus what's the percentage? What's the moisture content you have on that uh, uh, gravel? What's the moisture content? Uh, 4. 4. 6. 1. 6. 1. 6. 1. 6. All right, percent of 1963 is equal to 19 9 4.4. But one thing that I recommend you to do when you're doing this, get that quantity. What is that quantity is? Can you tell me real quick? No, no, no. Yeah, what's, the, what's that value? 31.31. 31. So when you get your weight of water, all you have to do is do, do this. So if you were looking for 254, you can just simply subtract that from it because that water comes in that moisture content. Do you see that? And then you're going to do the same thing for the water that comes in for the fine aggregate. Then you add, due to the moisture content, as you can do the absorption of the cost aggregate plus the absorption to the fine aggregate. See, if you do it that way, you never make any mistake. Never ever. You don't need to know when it's, when the absorption is more than the moisture content for the free water. We're talking all these things. You put it that way, it will carry it out. So sometime with that 256 that you end up, if your absorption is more, that number will be even higher than 256 or 254 that you need. Because that aggregate going to absorb so much water to a level that you don't even have enough coming from the moisture content. So you don't have to worry, is that a mistake because you end up with more than you expect? No, it's not a mistake. It's depending on the condition for the time. Okay, my good people, thank you so much for your patience. Please go practice. That's why we do this in class activity. Weekend does not mean watch football. Do you hear me? <laughs> it means practice for civil engineering. So, my name is Dr. Claude Villiers. Uh, I'm an associate professor in, uh, in the civil engineering program here. Uh, so what you see today that I went over, and I'm giving you a summary of what, what was going on in the class itself. We actually went to a full design of a concrete mix with the students. So first the problems was called for a foundation that has a slope of three to four inch that also have a F prime C. F prime C is the compressive strength. That was 3,000 PSI. PSI is 10 pound per square inches. So that was the target of the strength that they have to do. And then from there, they, that's the type of cement they use. No data was available. And then they use no air entry. So air entry.